Okay, so what we're going to look at today is a practical function of E squared. So we're going to look at it first on a brand new rifle, and then we're going to switch over to a rifle that we shot 10,000 rounds sustained fire through and saw how E squared held up. If we look at the camera, you see that E squared in a brand new rifle, we have a channel that comes down close to the, the shoulder of the throat of the chamber. What it will do is the casing comes up just to the short of the E squared, and that allows channels to be open to the incoming gas that's fired from the gun to channel to drive down there, compress the neck, and push against the shoulder. It's difficult to see in this is because this is a very short fired gun. It's only been fired maybe 20 rounds through it. So it's hard to see the debris built up on the, on the chamber, but in the 10,000 round gun, you'll see exactly the inlet and where the brass is stopping. So as we can see here, we have the E squared that's been shot through the 10,000 round gun. As you can see, the lines of E squared have been very slightly affected. They're really not that bad, but you can see where the chamber itself, where the brass had stopped, and where the erosion of the throat had been affected. And you can see the our E square lines come slightly past the brass casing. And what this does is when you fire the gun, the hot gases will come into this little area right here, travel down these lines, push against the shoulder and also compress the neck to break the seal of the neck against the chamber. Without the E squared chamber, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have the expansion of the neck inside the chamber and it's going to friction lock between brass and steel you have what, um, what they call the Blish effect, which the Blish effect is a, is a higher rate of friction against two materials rubbing against each other. This has been found in other designs to, to slow down guns in the past, such as like the Thompson. T Thompson gun had a Blish lock, which was a brass lock in a steel receiver. When you shoot a gun, the same effect happens. You have the brass casing against the walls of the chamber, and what happens is it will cause more friction than if it wasn't locked against it under high pressure. And so what it does is it pushes it back, it creates a gap. A lot of this same theory is based in plastic thermal molding as well. So plastic, in plastics, they put draft in it to where it breaks away from the seal as soon as possible so the plastic falls out of the mold. We kind of, because we can't, we're not making the ammo, we don't have angle in there. So on the body of the round, you have angle, but on the neck of the round, you have no angle. It's straight walled, so you get that compression against the sidewalls. And so the way we got it to break free is we added E squared to come and pressurize um, down on it because that excess hoop stress pushing out on the chamber, we just compress it right back down again, going through the out to the outside of the, the brass. And so the benefit from that is you have the force, all that force of pulling on the, the round on the little tiny hook of the extractor. The extractor is not very big. It's about half the size of an AK extractor. That's one detriment to the AR-15 is the size of the extractor. It's a great lug design, but it doesn't yield for a very large, wide extractor. It's a very thin extractor for a battle, for a, an intermediate rifle. So with reducing friction and force it takes to pull it out, all the, the, all the extractor has to do is hook on the rim and pull it out. It's not doing any extra work, you know, so it just um, reduces a lot of stress and, and extends the longevity on your extractor. So the E squared feature um, was patented back in 2014 um, by us and it will be only found in POF USA Patriot Arms Factory rifles.